If you're not a US resident and you don't have a social security number, then banking and doing business in US dollars can make life pretty difficult sometimes. Maybe you're selling on Amazon and you wanna receive a payout like this one, but your country isn't on their accepted list. Or maybe you have exactly the same problem with Stripe payouts like this one. Or whatever the case, maybe you just want some shiny bank cards for your own personal use. All of these things can be a really daunting challenge, but I've just gone through the entire process for myself, so I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it as well. So it seems to me like the more successful you get in life, certain things that normal people find difficult, you find really easy, but then a lot of things that normal people find really easy just become more and more difficult over time. And banking in US dollars as a foreigner with no SSN is definitely on that list of things. But I finally figured it out for myself. So in this video, I'm gonna to explain to you how to open a US bank account if you have no social security number, you don't live in the US or you're not a US citizen. What are the various options and ways that you can do this? And what is the easiest or best option for you depending on your circumstance, whether you're an individual, whether it's for personal use, or you have some sort of online business like Amazon FBA or you know Shopify dropshipping or whatever the case may be. So if you find this video valuable, then smash the thumbs up button. Do subscribe to the channel as well if you want more content on building an Amazon FBA business or any kind of online business. And without further ado, let's dive in. Okay, so first of all, who is this actually relevant for? Um, it may be for individual personal use or you may have a business. And to be honest, the business use is probably most common. Um, but like, for example, I'm using it for my businesses and I'm also using uh, US bank accounts for my personal use. So if you're an individual, it may be because you are sending and receiving a lot of US dollars or you're traveling a lot in countries that use US dollars. Maybe your country, your home country just doesn't have a very good banking system or it could be risky or something like that. Um, you may also want access to the US credit card sort of system. Now, US credit cards are really good and better than back home in Australia, definitely better than countries like Panama or Hong Kong as well. Um, and at the end of the day, you're gonna want, you're gonna have one of these reasons and you're also not a US resident and you don't have a social security number or SSN, which basically means you're not part of the US um, you know, tax system or whatever. Second reason, and again, probably more common for you guys if you're watching this, is that you have a business or you want to start some sort of online business. And again, this really depends on what country you're from. Um, but generally, most e-commerce around the world is gonna be taking place with US dollars and especially out of the United States itself. So you are starting an online business and you want access to US banking facilities, right? So it could be, it could be Amazon FBA, um, like I sell on Amazon FBA, or it could be if you have Shopify, dropshipping store, or you're selling online courses like I am through this YouTube channel, or you're doing any other sort of e-commerce basically, um, then you're probably gonna need to use a payment processor like Stripe to accept credit card payments from people. And that can be hard to do depending on which country you're from or which country you're incorporated in. Um, and again, for the same reasons as for individuals, you may just want a US credit card. So having said that, you may think you fall into one of these categories, but I just wanted to point out that this isn't for you if you have an Amazon FBA business and you're on this list here, uh, which I'll provide the links down below, but if you're on this list, your company or wherever you are living is on this list, then you're probably okay without a US bank account. Most countries, by the way, are on this list, but there are quite a few exceptions. So do have a look at this list and just make sure that you are on it and you are eligible. Now, if you are on that list, then I recommend for an Amazon business, then you just incorporate wherever you're living, your home country, you know, whether it's Australia, or Britain or wherever else, just incorporate back there. You deal with all of the taxes, um, your personal income taxes, as well as the company taxes in your home country. And basically you don't really need to do much else to sell in the US, for example. And then to actually receive the Amazon payments, even if you can receive them in your home country, use either TransferWise, which I'll be talking about in this video, or World First to receive the payments um, from Amazon in the US. That will save you some money. And again, depending on which country you're from, it may be necessary for you to actually be able to receive those payments. So again, I'll be talking about TransferWise later on, but I'll have links to both of these down below if you wanna check them out. And lastly, if you're doing this to try and hide money somewhere or to avoid tax or something like that, this probably won't help you, honestly. So moving on to the first one, let's talk about if you want this for personal use, how to open a personal US bank account without an SSN. So there are a couple of options. The first and the easiest option is just use TransferWise. They have this thing called a borderless account. I'll show you that in a second, but here are the sort of key advantages of this. Basically, you don't need to visit the US at all. So you can do it from wherever you are. It's a completely online sign up. Um, TransferWise is also the best for international payments. Now, a US bank account has a lot of advantages, but their, for example, their wire transfer system is kind of old school and it's really expensive. Now, TransferWise is a tech startup basically and they will give you much lower fees to send money internationally. Another advantage is you're gonna get real local bank accounts for major currencies. 
But the really big advantage that we care about right now is that you don't need any social security number. You can sign up from your home country and still get a local bank account in the US, usually anyway. So there are some disadvantages to doing this and that is these limitations. So it really depends where you're actually based, your country of residence. Um, TransferWise has specific limitations on specific countries in specific currencies as well. So you really just have to go and check. Um, you can explore their website or ask their customer support. Their support's really good. So if you're not sure, just send them an email or you can chat with them or give them a phone call. For example, if you are a resident of Panama, then TransferWise won't actually let you hold US dollars. So this won't work for you. And similarly, there are certain countries that you just can't send money to um, and just all of these little limitations. So you do need to go and check that. But by and large, um, for most sort of major countries that, you, that you're probably residing in, um, it's good for US dollars. Another disadvantage, you're not gonna get a credit card. So again, this isn't a real bank. You don't get all the facilities and all the sort of options down the line. You can get a debit card through the borderless account, but it's only available in, I believe right now, I think Europe and the UK. I could be wrong about that. So if you're okay with TransferWise not being a fully featured bank and you can't go to the US or you don't wanna to go to the US, then it's really easy to sign up. Just go to the link in the description down below. Uh, that'll take you to the website. There's some identity verification you need to do, and but the whole thing will be done in a couple of days. Uh, for me, I've registered two accounts in one time. I think they did it in one day and one time took five days. So it's a few days. At the end of this, you will have a US dollar bank account um, all set up, all ready to go, and I'll show you that right now. So this is the TransferWise website. Pretty simple, I won't go through it, but you just click here, go to sign up, and then once you've gone through the sign up process, this is what their dashboard looks like. It's actually really cool. So you can see they also do just standard money transfers. So that's if you have your bank account back home and you send it to somebody else's bank account somewhere else in the world, um, they can do that through send money. But you can also now add money, and that's the borderless functionality. You can see here I have balances and it says zero, 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 zero. Um, but if you go to the balances here, you can actually add all of these bank accounts instantaneously and have them created for you. Um, so I'm actually a resident of Panama, so I don't have a US dollar bank account for me. Like I said, this option doesn't work for me. Um, but if you do, then you can click on the view button once you've created it and it will show you the actual bank details. And to do that, to create your US dollar bank account, all you need to do is go to add balance and then from this drop down, choose US dollars if you haven't already done so. And then you'll just go through a little verification process and voila, that's it. You'll have your US dollar bank account. In terms of the verification process, TransferWise has been pretty good and pretty quick with me. Um, it's pretty standard. You have to confirm your identity using your passport or whatever, and then your address as well to prove that you live wherever you say you live. And that process can take three to five days to get done. And then you'll be able to completely use your US dollar bank account through TransferWise. And just to show you what it looks like, when you do click that, view button here, it'll pop up with something like this. And then you can add money, you can send money, um, you can convert to other currencies within your other bank accounts. And it's really, as long as you can get the bank account, it's a really simple, uh, seamless process. So overall, really good option. But again, it has some serious disadvantages depending on where you're coming from. So if you can't use this option or you want those full features, then your next option, and I would say better option, is to actually go to the US, visit a bank, and open a bank account there. Now again, you don't need a social security number to do this. So the advantages of going to the US and opening a real bank account, uh, you get a real bank account from a real bank, which means there are none of those sort of country specific or currency specific limitations. You can also then start getting real debit cards and real credit cards as well. The disadvantages obviously are that you have to visit the US in person. Now that may be a real hassle. It may not be a possibility for some of you. Now you may have to visit a few banks or branches to be successful, but it's important to note here that there's no legal requirement from, you know, from the government or from anywhere else that requires you as a, as a non-resident or as a foreigner in the United States to have this social security number to open that checking account. It, it's purely up to the bank and even to, up to the branch and their own local policy. Um, and if you wanna confirm that, Here's a link, which is the Consumer Finance American government website. Uh, and they answer the question, can I get a checking account with a, without a social security number? And the answer is yes, you can. It, and they basically say, go to the banks and just ask the banks, okay? So that's what you need to do. Come to the US and go, go to these banks. Now I'll explain this in more detail. So you, you're in the US or you've planned to go to the US. I recommend you try one of these three banks. You may have luck with others, um, but I've heard that these are the sort of most foreign friendly ones. I've highlighted Bank of America because that's who I went to and the very first branch that I walked into, the first person I saw, they opened it up for me. Okay, so you're in the branch or you've planned to go into the branch, just go and ask to open a checking account, right? And all you're gonna need to provide is a passport and a second form of ID. That's all I had to get. 
Um, it may vary, they may ask for some more details, for example, maybe some um, proof of address or something like that, but this is all I needed. Now step five, you do however need some sort of US mailing address to actually receive your cards in the mail. Um, but it's not that hard to get one if you're in the US, just stay in an Airbnb or something for a week, ask your hosts whether you can send mail to them and normally they'll say yes, uh, that's actually what I've done, it works fine. It doesn't need to be your address, it just needs to be somewhere for the cards to go so you can ask friends or acquaintances as well. Now, if you've done all this correctly and you know generally they'll say, yes, this is fine, you've provided your ID, your documentation, then they should just open your bank account on the spot. And then it'll take about seven days for them to send out your cards in the mail, but you will have a bank account open, a US bank account with no SSN uh, on the spot, literally on the first day that you try this. So that's pretty cool, but let's take it one step further. So this is again, still for personal use, Let's talk about credit cards now. So you also have the option as a non-US resident in the US while you're here visiting that bank um, to get a credit card or multiple credit cards. But there are a couple of obstacles that we need to you know, get over in the first place. First one is the SSN again, that's we have no social security number or the ITIN. Now I don't even know what that stands for, but it's essentially some sort of equivalent. Now like foreign students and things like that can get an ITIN instead of an SSN. But we don't need one, it's okay, so we don't need to worry about it. Um, the second obstacle though, is that you also don't have any credit history. So back in your home country, in Australia or in Canada or wherever else, you may have credit history and that will not transfer over to the United States. So both of these things need to be overcome for us to get a credit card, an American credit card. Now again, it's a similar situation with the credit cards where there's no legal requirement for you to have an SSN as a foreigner. It's simply up to the banks. Okay, so it may be again, just a matter of going to multiple banks and applying or inquiring. I got this list for the requirements by bank from this website, you can go and check it out. Um, but I saw that Bank of America was on this list and they were also on the recommended banks list anyway. So I just went to Bank of America. When I was opening the bank account, I also asked for a credit card with my passport and they said yes. So you can try. Uh, American Express would be the next one that I would have tried. Um, but I have read anecdotally, I can't confirm this, that if you want an Amex card, then the blue card is the only one that you can get with no credit history. But again, you can choose from any of these options that allow you to go into the branch without any SSN or ITIN and just basically hand over your passport to get one of these credit cards. So that's talking about getting a credit card with no social security number. The second obstacle that we needed to jump over was no credit history, okay? So again, I, maybe I got lucky, but the very first Bank of America branch that I went into said that I could get a credit card um, with no credit history at all. So this is my pick, this is the one that I selected. It's the Travel Rewards Credit Card by Bank of America. You can go and look that up. It is this one at the moment. They do have this, it says online bonus points offer, but you actually get it in the branch as well when you go. Um, it seems to be a pretty decent card. So these are the main features. It's free, there's no annual fee. Um, you get 1.5% back in terms of reward points. And as well, if you travel a lot, you don't get a foreign transaction fee. So that's why I picked this one. Now again, just to summarize those steps, Go into the branch while you're opening the bank account, ask them, just say that you want a credit card as well. Maybe you'll get rejected or maybe they'll tell you to get some other credit card. There are some secured credit cards that you can get where because you don't have a credit history, you actually put some money down and, and they take that as a deposit basically for you to have a credit card. And that way you can build up a credit history. But again, in this case, they didn't ask me for anything like that. Um, they did ask me a few questions about my income and you know, basically standard sort of credit check questions. And in this case, I got approved on the spot. Sometimes you will have to actually have to wait around about seven days to get a, um, a notice back. And then you have to get your card, basically your credit card at your US mailing address that we talked about before. So again, I was just using an Airbnb address. So that's your US bank account and your US credit cards with no social security number and no credit history either. So that's already a really big achievement. Now let's talk about if you're starting a business, if you want this for business purposes, it's gonna be similar, but there are some differences. So let's talk about it. So the first, and again, the easiest option is to just use TransferWise, open that borderless account. It's exactly the same process as I described before, as if you were an individual, but in this case, register your business back in your home country. It's the easiest way to do this normally. And then just sign up onto the transfer website as your business. Now, again, you're not signing up in the US, so that's why there's no EIN or SSN or anything like that required. You're all you're doing all of this through your own home country. Be aware of those country specific limitations. Again, ask TransferWise if you're not sure. Um, and then this is sort of a bonus, it's the same functionality, but the reason why TransferWise is really good is because if you are selling on US, then you can open your US dollar account. If you start selling in Europe, for example, on Amazon, 
it's very, very easy to just open up that Euro account as well. And all of those bank accounts will function completely as local bank accounts to receive Amazon payouts without any additional fees or anything. Um, this link, I'll leave it below in the description, but that's just some instructions from TransferWise as to how to link your bank account to Amazon. The second and equally easy option is to use World First. Now, I won't really go into this process. It's basically exactly the same as TransferWise. The fees are pretty much the same. They're just a different company fulfilling the same need. I actually use World First in my Amazon business and I use TransferWise um, for my personal business and my YouTube business. Now, they're pretty much the same. Just go with whatever floats your boat, really. So those are the two easy options for opening a US bank account for business purposes without an SSN. Um, again, keeping in mind those limitations that basically both World First and TransferWise will limit specific currencies for specific uh, countries of, regis of registration or residence rather. So again, the better option or the sort of most flexible option is to open a US bank account and to get the real US credit cards. But when it comes to companies, we have a problem. You cannot open a corporate bank account or a, get a corporate credit card for a foreign owned company in the United States. If you need to go down this route, then you need to register a US entity within the United States, get a US mailing address for that entity, and then get an EIN or an employer identification number for that business. And then what will happen is that the LLC uh, will be owned by your sort of home company, if that's what you're doing, or you can register just in the US. The good news is that this is also really easy, really cheap, and really quick too. So first of all, you need to register a US LLC. You could register some sort of other corporation, but generally an LLC is just gonna be easier and simpler. So the first step to registering your US LLC is to choose which state you wanna register it in. Um, now the information that you'll see about choosing these states, most of the information is for US citizens and US residents, and the decision criteria are quite different. So if you're a US resident, generally you'll just register your LLC where you reside. Um, however, we don't live in the US, so our options are basically based on cost, privacy, and any annual requirements that we have to go through. You can go and do your own research as to which state you wanna incorporate in, but in my opinion, the best options for those criteria are Wyoming and New Mexico. So they're both private, which means your name will never actually be on the documents. Um, they're both very cheap and they have very little annual filing requirements. So you can choose between the two. So I personally chose to go with Wyoming, but New Mexico is a good option as well. Then just get an agent who will be your registered agent, which basically is a requirement in, I believe, every state. Uh, they'll also do the incorporation for you, file all the papers, that sort of thing. So I use wyomingagents.com. Costs 150 bucks, takes a day or two. And at the end of it, you'll have your LLC and a registered address. So hopping over to the Wyoming website. Um, again, these are the guys that I used. You can shop around if you want, but these I believe were the cheapest. Uh, go down here, go to form a company. And then most of this is pretty self-explanatory. You just type in your you know, whatever. LLC name, LLC, make it member managed, put your own contact information. The mailing address will not be your business registered address. So you can put your home address in whatever country it is in here. Um, count set up, obviously. Now, here are some other options. You do need an EIN, and that's the next step of this video. If you want, you can get these guys to do it with no SSN, it costs 250 bucks. But the way that I'm gonna show you is very quick, very easy, and it's free. So I would say, do not add a tax ID to your filing, fill in your billing info, and then just go submit order. Step two, now get the EIN. So this is quite simple, although it takes a little while to fill this form out. Basically, you need to fill out the IRS SS4 form. So you can get that here. I'll put these links down below in the description, um, but that'll take you to this form or a page showing this form anyway. If you don't understand how, exactly how to fill this out, then I've also included this link, which has some pretty detailed instructions um, on every single section in this form. Once you've filled all of that out, obviously this EIN section stays blank because you don't have your EIN yet. Um, so you fill this out, then you fax it. So I've put the number, where is it? I put the number here, but you can also find that in those instructions, which I've linked. Fax that to the IRS. You can use any fax number, but you need to be able to receive or return fax back. So you can use your um, non-US based fax number, or I used efax.com as well. So fax that in once it's filled out, wait around about seven days, that lead time varies based on how busy the IRS is, wait seven days, and then the IRS will actually refax that form back to you, this one, with you know your filled out um, details, and they will put on the side somewhere the EIN number. And so as soon as you have that back, then you have your EIN. Now, obviously that's not very official. Um, so if you wait another week or two, normally around about another two weeks, then you'll get a final official confirmation letter from the IRS with your EIN number and that letter will go to your registered LLC address, which in, in my case 
was the address that I registered with Wyoming agents. Again, remember you don't need to wait for that final confirmation letter. All you need is that return fax that will have the EIN on it somewhere. That's a nine digit number. You'll see it when you get it. So the total time to do all this, get the LLC, get the EIN number uh, was around about 10 days roughly. And step three now, just keep in mind with your new US LLC that you do have annual obligations. Uh, so as a foreign owner of a US LLC, you will have to fill out IRS form 5472 and that's due on April 15th each year. So you can Google that, find out what you need to do for that one. Um, I won't cover that anymore. And then keep in mind as well, you will have to pay your registered agent fee, which in Wyoming is like 25 bucks per year. And there's also state specific requirements and in Wyoming, that's just an annual report. So that's like, I think $50 or $150 or something like that. That's the that's 12 months after you form the LLC. Once you've written them down somewhere so you don't forget them, let's move on to step four, which is to actually open the bank account, get the credit cards. Uh, and again, guys, this is going back to those instructions as per when, if we were opening up for our personal use as an individual, do that. So when I went to Bank of America, just bring the EIN, bring the company documents with you, as well as you know your passport, your second form of ID, if you have proof of address or whatever you needed, and then just do exactly the same thing. Now, keep in mind that as the owner of the LLC, even though it's this it's this corporate entity, you're still limited to banks that don't require um, the owner of the entity to have an SSN. So you still have those same limitations. Bank of America, I think it was Wells Fargo or TD Bank um, are more likely to open a bank account for you. You still have to go there in person. You still have to do all of that. In terms of credit cards, it's the same barriers again. You don't have credit history, neither does the LLC. Um, so you'll have those same limitations. You'll be limited to those same credit cards as well. And finally, if you can't get a normal credit card, again, just keep in mind, you'll probably be offered a secured credit card instead where you put some money down and then you can get a credit card. And then after six, 12 months, whatever else, you'll have credit history and you can get a real credit card. And that's the entire process from start to finish. So whether you wanted a bank account and a credit card, for your individual personal use or for your businesses, you now know what are the best options to use and exactly how to do it. One final thing that I didn't mention is Payoneer. So uh, you may want to check them out and do some research if you've heard good things about them. Um, as far as I'm aware, TransferWise Borderless or just going to the US and opening up a real bank account will be a much better option, but you're welcome to check them out as well. I don't have direct experience with them. And that's really it. Enjoy banking with your new US bank account. Um, in the land of the free. I hope you found this valuable. Remember to give it a thumbs up if you did and subscribe to the channel as well. And I'll see you in the next video.